Good evening, everyone. It's not quite six o'clock, but I'm coming on a little early so I can pray and spend more time in the Word. Eternal God, my Heavenly Father, is again I come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege. I'm thankful, Lord, that I can come to you at any time because you are my father, you're my daddy, Abba. Thank you for being who you are. Forgive me for my sins, my all my transgressions, every thought, action, and deed, sins of commission, sins of omission. And Father, hear my prayer. There's so much on the prayer list. You've you've you've, you've been so good. You have delivered, and and, and Kyrie is doing better, and that I'm thankful for about 60 plus people that have prayed with me. And Lord, I pray that these same people will help me to continue to pray that you would heal this land, the land needs healing, the, the wars and Father, behind the scenes, the rumors of war. But, but in your word, you said these things must be, then the end will come. So. We're not going to be weary in well-doing because we know that in due season we're going to reap if we faint not. And Lord, once again, I ask that you take me out of myself. Cover me with your blood. Don't let my flesh be on parade. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen, amen. Wow. <laughs> I better start praying with my eyes open. Watch as well as pray. I'm thankful for all of you that uh, are with me. And I'm uh, going to tell you in advance that uh, I'm just going to teach on Genesis one day a week now because there's so much that I need to to teach because Babylon is rising starting today. And for those of you that are putting those Good evening, Deacon. For those of you that are putting those ashes on your forehead, I've, I've got a word for you Friday. Because this is, this is not of God. That is something that happened way before the cross. And that, that, that sign of the cross is for Tamas and not, it's, it's not, not the, the cross of Jesus. Good evening, Dap. Good evening, everyone. The Lord's, I, I can't call her by his name. I closed my eyes and there you were. <laughs> there you were. And I'm going to get you, the Lord's. You know what I'm talking about. But, uh, these, uh, there's so much happening that has been incorporated in the church that is not, that is not uh, worshiping in spirit and in truth. Loretta, I will, I will send it to your, uh, to your messenger because I, some other folks ha have the same problem. And let me make sure, yeah, everything's on, but but uh, I will make sure e everybody gets it. So if you are having problems here, and just let me know, and I'll make sure that it comes to your messenger. I'm, I I uh, told you there there are things in the word that we have bypass or haven't paid any attention with the average person think that there was only one flood well, I'm talking about the flood of Noah but that is not true by any means when we studied the first chapter of Genesis in the beginning or in a beginning God created the heaven and the earth and in uh, Ezekiel and, and Isaiah both, the Lord made the earth to be inhabited, of, and which it was. No, it, and because Lucifer, the son of the morning, who God has set upon the mount of God, he actually ruled the earth. That there were, and, and if, if he ruled, that means there were folk that he ruled over. And I'm talking about God's creation. And we tend to go to Colossians, the first chapter, 
I want you to understand what I'm getting ready to say. Because those were created beings that he ruled over. They, they were people, but they were made. They were made by God. They were go to go to uh, Colossians the first chapter and the sixteenth verse, and then we're going to talk about this flood issue. Colossians one and sixteen says, "For by him, by God." were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. When the earth was created, he made it to be inhabited, and, and it was. The son of the morning, Lucifer, was the anointed cherub that covered the earth. He, he was on the mount of, of God, and I'm going to give you the, the verses shortly. As a ruler, a ruler has individuals under him. Like the President of the United States, he has authority. He has people under him. Well, on earth at that time, if when Lucifer said, "I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, send, put my throne above the throne of God," I will be like the Most High. I will, I'm, I'm going to exalt myself above the clouds. So that tells you that he was on earth. But we'll talk about that. But this thing with the flood, the, the, a flood is for judgment. And judgment only is for judgment. Now let's go to Genesis, and I want you to go to uh, the eighth chapter. And we're not going to read a lot, a lot of verses because I'm going to talk about the flood. The twenty-first verse after Noah offered burnt offerings. Remember, there was those that went on by seven every animal, clean animal on the face of the earth, he offered one of each as a sacrifice. One of each. And it took a little time because in the 20th verse he said he offered burnt offerings which are sin offerings. And the Lord verse 21 smelled a sweet Savor, and the Lord said in his heart, he was talking to himself, I will not again, I will not again curse the ground anymore. I'm not going to do that anymore for man, for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, neither will I again smite anymore. He said, he said, anymore, I'm not going to, he had done it in the past. I'm not, I, I, neither will I smite, neither will I again smite anymore everything, every living thing as I have done. It wasn't just this incident that was, that when we studied Genesis, the first chapter, in the beginning, or in a beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The heaven and the earth. Now, where there's, there's, there's heaven, there are heavenly bodies, there are stars, there, there's a solar system, as well as the earth and everything it, it produces. The earth was plenished. It wasn't barren because the Lord created it to be inhabited, which it was. But because of the sin of Lucifer, the anointed cherub that, that covered, because of his rebellion, God, it, it became dark. God creates darkness and light, but, but because of his rebellion, sin came into the world. And because of sin, God 
sent that first flood. If you don't believe it, go to Genesis, the first chapter, and we'll see, see what happened after the first creation. The, the uh, first verse is talking about the first creation. In, in the beginning, or in a beginning, God created <coughs> the heaven and the earth. What happened? <coughs> when Lucifer tried to take over, what happened? The earth was <coughs> say, you are like, get out of here right now. I ain't got time for you. you no, know, Satan ain't got no mama. He's a bastard. And the earth was without form and void. The earth became without form and void. <clears throat> and void. It was not the way God had created. God, When God creates anything, it has substance. It's not void. It became void because of what this rascal was doing. He wanted to exalt his throne above the throne of God and want to be like the Most High. He, he wanted to take God's job. He wanted to be the big dog. And what did God say? I will have no other gods before me. None. So, because of this, I'm a, I'm a, I want you to see what happened. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, upon the face of, uh, of the abysses, because those, some of these folk that sinned with him are, according to Jew, Jude, are in chains, under darkness, or under deep, and the spirit. What did the spirit of God do? In that second verse, the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. It was a flood. Waters, not just on earth, all the way to almost heaven itself. No constellations. Stars were gone. The moon was gone. The sun was gone. It was no longer as God had created because of the sin of Satan. And so God sent that first flood. That, that's what that second verse is about. The, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the what? Not water. Waters. What, what waters was from heaven to earth. Waters. A big flood. Now... Let's see in God's Word. And get your Bibles, please. Please, get your Bibles. There were two floods. There was Lucifer's flood. And there was the flood in Noah's day. In Genesis 1 and 2, you see where, where that uh, he moved upon the face of the waters. Go to Jeremiah 4. 23 through 26. <sighs> what did he say he... He saw in, in, in verse 23. He done, he had, he done create the heaven and the earth, but what, did he, what happened in verse 23? What did Jeremiah say? He said, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, they had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and the hills moved lightly. I beheld... And lo, there was no man, and the birds of the heavens fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. This was Jeremiah prophesying. This is this this was the cause of Luc this was the cause of the flood. And and I want you to uh, go to Second Peter, three, uh, verses five and six because it's been taken out of context for years and years. 
it, people been thinking that it's uh, Noah's flood, but that's but it, it, it is just the opposite. First Peter, I'm, I'm sorry, Second Peter, Second Peter, the third chapter. And and this first this first verse is talking about us now. But they the the fifth verse for this they willingly. No 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 no. Okay, yeah. For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old. The heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. This is talking about Genesis 1, verses 6 and 9. Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. And then it goes to, to right now. But the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store, res reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Uh, men. Uh, verse 5 is, is uh, <clears throat> the same as Genesis 1, verse 6 and 9, talking about waters emerging. Now, the earth was made waste. The earth was wasted in Lucifer's flood. I gave, I gave you the scripture. But the earth was not made waste in Noah's flood. Go to Genesis, the 8th chapter. Genesis 8. Oh, no, I've got to answer the door. Genesis 8. Lord, I gotta learn how to speak Espanol D1214. But anyway, uh that was the Lucifer's flood was made waste. But in Noah's flood, the earth was not made waste. I told you to turn to at what that give you Genesis 8. Yeah. Genesis 8, verse 11 and 12. What does it say? The earth was still there, and the dove came in to him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off, and Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. The waters were gone, but the earth was still there, and he stayed yet other seven days and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more, meaning the earth was solid, so it wasn't laid waste. There was a flood, but but the earth was still there. In Lucifer's Luc flood, the it was gone. Everything was underwater, even the heavens. But in Noah's flood, the earth was not made waste. It was it was cleansed. And uh, First Peter three and twenty. Well, I wish I had my my reader in galaxy. First Peter three and twenty. Did I say first Peter or second Peter? First Peter, okay. Yeah. This is in Noah's day. The earth was still there. Because it talked about Jesus went and preached to the spirits in prison in the antediluvian days, which sometimes were disobedient, which were 
which once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing were in that a few that is eight souls were saved by water the souls were saved in the second flood none were saved in the first flood did you, did you, you see that the, the first in the first flood everything everything was made waste in the second flood the earth was not made waste and the in the first flood the earth was empty what the, what that second verse said that's the end of the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without shape and void. Void. But in Noah's flood, the earth was not made empty. It, you're not, you, really, when you get a chance, Genesis 6, verse 18 through 22, and we read 8 and 16, the earth was still there. The earth was empty in the first flood. It was not empty in the second. And the earth was made totally dark. We read that second verse of Genesis. It was totally dark. But in Noah's flood, it was not made totally dark. As a matter of fact, there was a, there was a window in the, top, in the top of the ark to let the light in. So, the, so, so there had to be light. Or, or they, would have, they would have perished. They couldn't have seen each other. God provided light. Matter of fact, let's, let's look. I'm not going. I'm not going to read Genesis eight, verse six through twenty-two. But in the sixth chapter of Genesis, you know the story. We've gone over it. In <laughs> in in Lucifer's flood, there was no light from heaven. Things were dark. They were dark. But in Noah's day. I told you, read Genesis 8, verse 6 through 22. There was light from heaven. Light, there was always light. There was, in, in uh, the, the uh, flood in Lucifer's day, there was no day and night. Let me read Genesis, the first chapter, verse 2 through 5. You know the story, but I don't know if we've, if we've been paying attention or not. Genesis 1, verse 2 through 5. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Waters from the top of the solar system, not just on earth. Waters. So God had to bring light. Let there be light. You see that? Let there be light. The light came in, in that third verse. Be, be, up to that point, there was, it was total darkness. Total darkness. But uh, in uh, Noah's flood, and, and it's important that you read the, the eighth chapter. Matter of fact, read it out. There was light from heaven. And there was no day, there was no day and night. Let me read the rest of this story. And God said, let there be light. And God saw the light that it was good and divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So there was, in, in uh, the day of uh, the flood of Lucifer, there was no day nor night. But in Noah's day, there was day and night. For, for, for a, a year, uh, a year and... and <laughs> For one year, what, in ten days, all vegetation was destroyed. But ve vegetation was not destroyed in Noah's day. Are you still with me? Hey, George. <laughs> and once that, let's look at Genesis uh, 1, and I'm going to read verses 6 through 12. Because... Underline waters. Waters is plural. It's not water. It's waters. And God said, let there be firmness in the midst, in the middle of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Waters from the waters. And God made the firmness and divided the waters, which were under the firmament, 
from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. I told you in Noah's day, that wasn't a regular rain. There was water above, and it still is to this day. The, the clouds hold the water, and there's water below, and what did God do? How did he separate them? He, he made a firmament, and he called the firmament heaven, and evening and morning was the second day. So there was no continued, the word I want to use is, is abating or, or drying up of, of, the, of, the, of the, the waters of the earth. He didn't just take it away. But in Noah's day, when you read the eighth chapter, that water was continually evaporating. From the earth. I told you there's two floods. There's two floods. And Genesis 1 and 10, what does it say? God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw it was good. Waters were taken off the earth in one day. Waters were taken off the earth in one day, according to that 10th verse. Waters. Now, it didn't dry up, but there was still water on the earth, but the flood was being removed. But in Noah's day, it took months for the waters to evaporate. That's in the 8th chapter. It took months for the waters to evaporate. And in the Lucifer's flood, I read I read the the first chapter six six through twelve. Just just read it off by yourself. I'm not going to read all this. There was a supernatural work of taking the waters off the earth. There was a supernatural work of taking the waters off the earth. Matter of fact, I will read it. Genesis 1, verse 6 through 12. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. So he was removing the water. And God called the firmament heaven, and evening and morning was, was the second day. And God said, Catch this. Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place, and let dry land appear. Let dry land appear. And what did he call the dry land in ver verse 10? Now we got earth. We see earth again. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called seas. And God saw it was good. And then what? Then he's, he said, let the earth bring forth uh, grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit uh, tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself. Upon the earth. It wasn't, he, he didn't plant anything. He just said, let it be. Let it be. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself uh, after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Now remember I said it was a supernatural work of taking the water off the earth. It was supernatural. But in Noah's day. It was a natural work of evaporation of the waters. That whole eighth chapter, you need to read, read it good. It, it was a natural work of evaporation. That's the, reason he, that's, that's the reason they were on a cruise for a year and ten days, basically. But that water was five months. Five months the water, the water came. 150 days. Now... I don't want to, I just want you to understand what's going on. God moved during those two floods. It wasn't just one. There were two floods. And in, in that first flood, uh, the, all the fish were totally destroyed in the flood. But, but uh, in Noah's day, no fish were destroyed or created after Noah's flood. No, no, the, the, 
the, the water didn't destroy the fish. It destroyed man. And, and no fowls uh, were left on earth after, you know, uh, as you read in Genesis, the first chapter, there were no fowls. But there were plenty of fowls in Noah's day because some were on the ark. There was no man left. The earth was void. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was with, without, without for, it was void. There was nothing there. But in Noah's day, you know there were eight folk on, on, the, on the ark. They, they, they were left on the ark. There, there were people. And in uh, <laughs> Lucifer's day, there, there was no ark to save men. But in, no, in Noah's day, the ark was made to save both men and animals. Two floods. Two floods. Now, what was the cause? I'm glad you asked. What was the cause of the flood? Go to Isaiah, the 14th chapter. What was the cause? The 12th verse. Because this rascal had access even to the heavens. He was an anointed cherub that covered the earth, but he had access, dominions. Not, not the, the King James says from heaven, but ain't nobody, ain't nobody going. Ain't, no, no, no. That's God's domain. He, he fell from the heavens. And he was called the son of the morning. He was cut down to the ground. He was cut down to the ground. And the people that he ruled, he weakened. It says he weakened the nations. I told you there were people in his day. What did he say? What caused the flood? 13 always represents destruction. What's that 13th verse say? You said in your heart, like I don't know your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God or, or, the, or the angels of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, which is, which is uh, uh, the, the north. That's where God, in the sides of the north, which is a place of control. Promotion doesn't come from the east or the west or the, or the south. It comes from the north, according to Psalms. That's where, he, that's where he want to be, in the sides of the north. And I told you he was on earth. What, is, what does the 14th verse say? I will ascend above the height of the clouds. He was looking up. From the earth, I will be like the Most High. I'm gonna be like him. Did he? This is the same rascal that 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 deceived Adam. No, he didn't deceive Eve. Adam, well, no, I'm sorry. Adam was not deceived. He knew what was going on. But but Eve, he wanted her to do the same thing he wanted to do. You'll be as gods. You be as gods, but he said you can be bought down to hell. You will be bought down to hell, to the sides of the pit, down to hell, because of his pride, because of his arrogance, because he wanted to be God. God got angry with this rascal, and that caused the first flood. God got angry with Adam. Adam made God sick. God said, it repents me that I made man. He made one man, Adam. We went over that. It, and I'm going to give you 120 years to get together, boy. And no, that had nothing to do with 
nothing to do with Noah preaching. Noah, Noah did not preach 120 years. He did not preach 120 years. He preached 100 years. 100, no, he didn't preach. Wait, let, let me take that back. He did not preach. The building of the ark was the testimony, was the preaching. God had already warned Noah in Hebrews 11 and 3. He gave him a warning what he was going to do, and he commanded him to build an ark. He did not command him to preach because I'm going to destroy. Let's go back to Genesis. In the sixth chapter, and the third verse, he was talking about Adam. Look how, look at how that is worded. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, not men. For he also is flesh. He's as bad as the folk he's supposed to be ruling. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Adam was 810 years old when this statement was made. He died at age 930, which is 120 years. And in verse 5, God saw the wickedness of Adam. He saw the wickedness of, of, of a man was great in the earth. What was in Adam's head? Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Just like Satan in, Satan in, in the Old Testament, the son of the morning. And verse 6 it repented the Lord that he had made man on earth, and it grieved him in his heart. What did he say in verse 7? I will destroy man, Adam, whom I created from the face of the earth. He's the only person created from the earth. God made Adam. And I'm not only going to destroy Adam. <laughs> I'm going to destroy both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that I have made them. I made them. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And <laughs> verse 11 the earth also was corrupt before God. The earth was filled with violence in, that, in Adam's day. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it, it is corrupt for all flesh, not just Adam. All flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Now, I told you, he did, he, Noah did not preach. What's he say in verse 13? 13 is always destruction. And the Lord said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. The earth is filled with violence through them and behold I was destroyed them with the earth. There was no preaching. Some of these songs y'all sing get happy on. He, he knocked on the window. He knocked on the door. Them folk didn't knock on anything. They were dead. They were dead because the waters from above and the waters from below came together. It caused pressure. They were killed. But Noah was five, you see, he was 500 uh, years, years old when, where, where is that scripture? Uh, he, was, he was 500 years old when he had his sons in, in uh, chapter 5, verse 32. Now, 500. Okay. How old was Noah when the ark was built? How, old, how, how long did it take him? How long did it take him? He was, he was 500 years old. Let me find. I want, I want, to, I want to give you, give you the exact... He said he's going to send the flood. And when did Noah go on the ark? 
It was called when it's 500. Look, look at the, uh, chapter 7, verse 11. If he preached 120 years, I'm missing 20 years somewhere because in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the seventh month, the 17th day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened, water from below, water from above, he was, what time? He was 600 years old. So there was no 120 years of preaching pastors. There was no 120 years. The 120 years for, was for Adam to get right with God. Or God was going to destroy every person that he ruled over that had not died. And which he did with the exception of these eight. But in Satan's flood, he destroyed every person, all the vegetation, everything from, from the face of the earth. The flood was caused by Satan. I gave you Isaiah 14, verse uh, 12 through 14. It's in Jeremiah 4. It's in Ezekiel 28. But so the cause in, in Satan's day was Satan and his wickedness. But in Noah's day, the, the cause was the wickedness of man, of man and men. And let's not forget about the fallen angels. Come on, y'all. The, the, yeah, the fallen angels, those that were the same folk that was also in uh, during the days of, 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 uh, the, of uh, Satan's flood because they're created beings. Go to six, go, let's go back to the sixth chapter because y'all been trying to uh, attribute sons of God to uh, Seth line, which it, which it was not. But because Seth was just as wicked as his daddy, and neither one of them, them is in is is in the, those uh, hero heroes of of faith in uh, Hebrews eleven. But when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that was in Adam's. Adam was the first to have sons and daughters. After after he had Seth. Uh, according to the fifth chapter and the fourth verse, Adam, after he had begotten Seth, was eight hundred years. Was eight hundred years, and he begat sons and daughters. Okay, and this says when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, right in Adam's face, beginning with Adam, beginning with his generation, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. They raped them. They took them. They took the wives. It didn't say they took the women. It took the wives. Read it. I, if you're going to read something, read it correctly. But those are fallen angels. Those, the disembodied spirits even now cannot operate unless they're in a body. The Holy Ghost operates in a body. But there are also demonic spirits that operate. That's the reason they call them demon possessed. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and took them wives of which they chose. They didn't care. They took who they wanted to. They took them. If they took them, that means they, they were kidnapped and raped. And, and, the, and the Lord looked back at Adam in verse 3. Okay, you ain't going to stop him. Okay, okay. My spirit should not always strive with man because he's flesh too. He's bad. He is bad as, as these angels that came down and, 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 and took these wives. And though these angels, these fallen angels could not produce regular folk the, the same way that Cain's generations could not produce women. Well, these son, sons of, of, of God, these fallen spirits could not produce women either. They could only produce men, and they were giants. They, the, 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 the Anakims that, that, that you see the giants that even in in David's day, the Philistines, and there were giants in. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, there were giants before the flood, and there were giants after the flood, and yes, there are giants now. When the sons of God came in unto came. Underline that. Came in unto. Raped them. 
came in unto. Are y'all paying attention to me? They were raping these, these daughters of men. And they bare children to them. And the same became mighty men, which were of all men of renown. They were giants. All of this, the flood came in Noah's day because of all of this wickedness. And what was it? What was the result? Well, in, 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 in uh, Satan's flood, Lucifer's flood, it became necessary to make a new life on earth. That's what, what Genesis 1 and 3 all the way to the, the uh, second chapter and the 25th verse, that's what it's all about. It's a recreation. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without shape and void and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the floods, the waters, the waters. It became necessary to destroy his own, his, his own creation with a flood, just wipe it away completely. And that's, that's also, uh, you, you find it in uh, Isaiah 45 and 18, but in, so, so it was a new creation, but you don't see that happening in Noah's day, there was no new creation made. For all the men and the animals were not destroyed. When you read from Genesis 6 and, and uh, 18, all the way to the 8th chapter and 20, 22nd verse, and the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 16 that we will study, you will, you will see you know, uh, what God had to do. He took care of Noah. There was disrupt, disruption, but he saved Noah. In Satan's, in, in Lucifer's uh, generation, uh, in, his, in his day, there was nothing to take them above the flood. Those people were destroyed. But in Noah's day, it was just like the rapture. They went above, he took them up while those left behind were destroyed. And that's what's going to happen when the Lord himself descends from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together in the cloud, to, which is an ark, in the cloud. And there's, there's, according to Job, there's light in the cloud, in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. We're not going to go up to the cloud. The cloud's going to come down to us. That's our transportation. He takes us above what's going to happen when he, he, he comes back during the, the uh, seven-year tribulation to deal with these folk that was, that was as bad as, as those in the, in the, uh, in the days of, of Lucifer's flood and also in the days of Noah. They were wicked, and the Lord's... It, it's going to have to do a separation. I told y'all when, when I was teaching on John the Baptist, he told you what was going to occur. Y'all want to be saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire baptized, and that is false doctrine. John said, one is coming who is mightier than I, whose shoe latches I'm, I'm unworthy and loose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost to, for you to be called up to save you, and with fire for damnation. The, 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 the Holy Ghost is for your salvation. The fire is for judgment. And he will cast those into the lake of fire and brimstone, which is a baptism of fire. You know what you've been saying. I'm saved and sanctified. Holy Ghost feel fire baptized. Stop it. Get in the word. Those folk. They were, the flood represents the, the type of fire that's going to happen once we're called up. So what I'm, what I'm saying is, the, there was a flood, there were two floods. That's why the Lord, now let's go to, let's, let's go back to uh, the scripture that I read in the, what was it, the ninth chapter? Hmm. 
No, I'm sorry. It was it's the eighth eighth chapter. Let me put my glasses on quick front. When you when he made that burnt offering, when he built an altar, that's that was the first time you see worship, other than because Enoch had already warned the seventh from Adam, already warned that the Lord was coming with ten thousand of his saints, and he had a son named Methuselah who lived to be 969 years old, who had a son named Lamech, who was Noah's father. So Noah being warned of God through his, through his daddy, his granddaddy, and his great-granddaddy, he knew what was, what was, Noah was the only one that was just in his generation or in his genes. He was unaffected by what was going on around him, just like you shouldn't be affected. Just because it's there don't mean you got to be a part of what's going on. Talking about the Lord knows my heart. Yeah, he does. He says it's desperately wicked. Even, even those church folk, I didn't say Christians, church folk are wicked and the Lord knows your heart. He knew the heart, heart of these individuals. They were wicked and they were destroyed. But, what, but, but after Noah offered that sin offering, and, and burnt offerings are sin offerings, after he offered that offering, the Lord well, said, mm, what's that? boy, that smells good. That smells good. It was an offering for sin. It was a sweet Savior. It, well, that smelled good. That smelled good. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. He, he know you're going to be crazy. You know you're going to be crazy. And he'd have to keep. This earth would be nothing but water. It would be nothing but water. Because he know. He's, he ain't talking about Adam. Now he's talking about usins. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. And then he said neither will I smite anymore. Neither will I smite anymore. Anymore. Neither will, I, neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. He was talking about the two floods. But what he did, what, you remember we talked about that bow? And it's not a rainbow. The rainbow is around the throne of God. There's a difference between a bow and a rainbow. This was a bow. A bow. Let's read it, the ninth chapter. And the, what was it? The ninth verse, a covenant was established. Nine and nine. I will establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, which comes all the way down to us. I'm establishing my covenant. I'm going to make an agreement with you. Not only with you, but even with the, the animals. And if, Verse 10, And with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, of every beast, though I don't got my glass, uh, beast of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth, what was with you, they're, they're covered. A covenant is a covering. You have a covenant with, with Jesus Christ. You have the blood of Jesus. That's a covering. That's a covering. He gave them a covering. And I will establish my covenant with you, Noah. From this point on, neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there be any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Now, he didn't say there would be no floods. But he said there wouldn't be one big one to destroy the whole earth. We have floods. And this is just an example of what he can do. He, he can cut us off just like that. Just like that. And God said, this is the token. A token is a promise. This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you. And every living creature that is with you. See, you can cover your family. You can because of the covering, the covenant with Noah, the creatures are being covered too for 
perpetual generations, forever. Perpetual means forever. So what did he, what did he do? I do set my bow, not rainbow. Rain, you will only find rainbow mentioned in the Bible two times. Revelation 4 and 3, Revelation 10 and 1. I challenge you to find it anywhere else. Get your concordance. You're not going to find rainbow but, but two times. He said, my bow. My bow. He ain't going to allow you to just walk, walk in his throne room. No, because there's a rainbow around the throne and 10,000 times, 10,000 thousand. Man, th th those, those angels wouldn't have no room. No. I set my bow in the cloud and it shall be, be for a token of the covenant between him and the earth. Him and the earth. Not you. It's not, it's not you. It's the earth. It's a covenant he made. He, 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 made, he made with Noah. But I'm going to withdraw my hand from sin another flood. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth. The bowl is going to be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. He didn't say there would be a flood. There wouldn't be the type of flood that he has, he has two floods that he sent. And the bowl shall be in the cloud. And I'm, I'm showing you that I'm showing you that it's not <laughs> the one around the throne. Of God, because what's he doing? He's sitting in glory looking into it. He'll look upon it. Look, look at verse 16. What's he doing? The rainbow, the rainbow is, is a circle, okay? A circle. This is a bow. Not even a good half a circle, an arc. I will look upon it and I, rem I will remember the everlasting covenant. He's, see, he's talking to himself. God the Father, God the Son. They, you just see him talking to himself in verse 16? And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of the flesh that is upon the earth. The bow is not a rainbow. That, that, those verses 9 through 15 are the promises that are already given. It's a covenant. It's an outward, visible sign, because we always want to see something. So, so he set it, placed it, set it as a reminder of the sacred agreement. It is set. <laughs> the bow is a weapon. A bow is a weapon. But God's wrath is laid to rest, so he just shows the bow. There's no error, no destruction. I'm not going to use this bow. I'm not going to use this weapon again. That's what he's talking about. I'm not going to use this weapon. Now, now he didn't say that he that, that he's going to let you get away. I hear you old. Well, I'm old too. I'm 75. But I've been saying for years, it won't be water but fire next time. And it will be. It will be. Hey, Dick and Brian, it, 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 that's going to be fire. The Lord is warning us right now. There have been floods, have there not? There have been fires. They've been trying to put out a fire in California for about five years. And they, you can't use a lot of water to try to put the fire out because what, once you use water, there ain't no grass. The grass has been burned up. So what does the water you've been using to put the fire do? It causes a flooding. And, and the flood is going to cause potholes in the road. Potholes is going to destroy vehicles. It's going to kill folks. The Lord is speaking through nature right now, warning us to flee from the wrath to come. He warned from Adam all the way down to to uh, to Lamech. When he took them, he took Lamech off the scene. He took Methuselah off the scene. Noah just walked. He just, was just translated. The first prophet in the Bible was was uh, Enoch. You'll find him in Jude. Saying, "Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of His saints with judgment." He was talking about he was talking about the second coming, not the rapture, to bring judgment. Well, I'm telling you the same thing. Unless you get your life in order, 
unless you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. I'm not going to pretty this thing up. I'm so tired of these spineless pastors trying to sweet talk you, letting you know, think, think of Jesus, oh, he's full of grace, mercy, and love. He, let me tell you something, he is what he is, but he's also a, a, a God of wrath, and in Revelation, that cup of his wrath is being filled up with iniquity, and when he gets tired, he's going to jerk us out of here, and those of you that have not given your life to Christ, you're going to be caught up with the Jewish nation, that he's going to use that tribulation period to draw them. It's not for punishment, but because he came unto his own, and his own received them not, he, to them that did, he gave the power to become the sons of God. And after he left, he, because when he came, he did not preach to any of the Gentiles. They might have heard him, but he told the disciples, don't go to the Gentiles, don't go to the, the Samaritans, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which he did. But the Bible declares he came unto his own, and his own received him not. I'm talking about uh, uh, us, us of the tribe of Judah. We did not receive him. But those that did, Jews and some Gentiles, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. And, they, and after he died and got, and got up on the third day, then and only then did he breathe on his disciples. He breathed into them, said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, which they did in the upper room, and said, now you can go into all the world, not just to my people, go into all the world, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. Well, the end of the age is about upon you. God has... Want did I not tell y'all about two months ago that, that Russia would, would, would invade Ukraine? I told y'all that. Russia is the bear in Daniel. This is just a mirror of things to come. Russia is laying on her side in the book of Daniel with three ribs in her mouth. The three ribs are nations that, that, that she has conquered. Well, this is not the tribulation period, but God is revealing to us through wars and rumors of war, that he said nation will be against nation, not nations. One nation against one nation, one kingdom against one kingdom. But these things will, these things have got to be then and only then will the end come. Well, the Lord is trying to show you and me that I am getting tired of y'all. It repented me that I made Adam, and I think we get on his nerves. He has sent, you, you call it a pandemic. But he has sent this pestilence because you, you can't, you can't, you cannot, I don't care, I don't care how many shots you take. And, and some of the shots are not even working. And it's not a pandemic. God already told you and me in Second Chronicles 7 and 13. I ain't going to quote 14 yet. In 7 and 13, when I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. You remember how long we went without rain? When I send locusts to divide the land. We, we, we call them some kind, of, some kind of worms, but they were devouring. When I send pestilence that you call a pandemic, you call COVID among my people, which he has. He says, then and on the, if, when my people, us as children of God, called by his name, we've got to humble ourselves. We got some mean folk in the church. Can't get a prayer through. Well, can't, can't, it ain't going nowhere. Because, number one, you've got to be willing and obedient, and you'll be able to eat of the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured with the sword. Rebellion is the same as witchcraft, and he's not going to answer your prayer. I don't care how holy and sanctified you think you are, you've got to be in, 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 in obedience to God. He said, he said his people. He ain't talking about church folk. He's talking about folk that are truly born again. Because if you're not born again, you can't pray. You can talk, but you can't pray. He, that's why when I went on Facebook the other day, and I thank all 60 plus of you, I said, I want those of you that, 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 that are righteous. Because he, hear, he hears the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous only. And I put only in capital letters. I want you to pray with me. Because those that are not righteous, he does not hear you. He's not your daddy. 
You're of your father, the devil. But when we get right with God, we have peace with God. We communicate with God. We have power with God. We have anointing in our life where we don't even have to pray 15 or 20 minutes. We say, Lord, here I am. Lord, Lord, I need you. And guess what? Quicker than right now. Not always. Not always. But he will. He's not always going to remove the, the temptation of the trial. But he said he will with the trial. Make a way of escape. Lo, I'm with you always. But I'm here to tell you, this, this ain't over. This ain't over. You don't know what's happening behind the scene. I, yet now Facebook, you're probably going to throw me off again, but I don't trust any president. I don't trust those that are, that are meeting, in, meeting in secret behind the doors. I trust in God. I trust the decision that he made. That's the reason I do pray for our leaders, but I'm also watching you leaders because we, we, we know what's going on behind the scene. You know, we know how rich they get. We need some godly people praying. If my people that are called by my name would humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from the wicked ways, he says, then, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sin. Then I will heal the land. He put a stipulation on that. These hospitals are full. They're talking about, well, you can take the mask off. Go ahead, fool. Take them off. Take them off. Let me tell you something. Are you, go, are you going to believe these doctors and the politicians? Are you going to use your common sense? God has sent the warning. God always sends a warning. Then he sends judgment. Do you hear what I said? There's always a warning before judgment. He has warned us. Pandemic, fires, wars, kill children. Father, father yesterday killed, killed his three children and his wife and killed himself. At a, a little boy, Kyrie, that I have you praying for. He picked up a gun for your boy that's on the bed. But this, this one touches my heart. I know the, I know the, I know the, I've known the family for over 40 years. What I'm saying is, you don't know what's going to happen in the next few seconds. It pays you to be right with God. To have a, I've got a covenant with God. I, I have confidence. I'm not getting right. I'm right with God. Did I say I was perfect? No. But I know that I know that I know that when this life is over, no, I'm not going to fly away. My spirit's going, my spirit's going to be with the Lord. Angels don't have wings. Y'all need to stop that stuff too. Angels don't have wings. Oh, talk about when folks that they got their wings. Little pale bells flying in the air. We don't have wings. We don't have angels don't have wings. They don't have wings. Read the story of Abraham, those three that came to him. Men. But when they got to Sodom, they were angels. Be careful to entertain strangers, for some have entertained angels unaware. If they had wings, you know there's angels. Stop it. Oh, they got their wings. I know they're in a better place. Mm. Is hell empty? I'm hoping that they're in a better place. And no, they don't look down on us. They don't want to see, see us and the, the crazy stuff we do. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be glory. Stop it. The Lord is warning us now. Get together. My spirit shall not always strive with man. He didn't strive with Adam. And he ain't going to put up with us always. It's time to get right with God. And those of you that have not accepted him, we accept him by faith. By faith. It's no mourner's bench. It's, it's no hallelujah. It's no speaking in tongues. We're saved by grace through faith. It is not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. And nobody can tell you how to get the gift, but God himself. He, he, op, we operate by faith. I accept him by faith. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins and you confess that with your mouth, the Bible declares you'll be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Give yourself to him. 
on Friday we're going we're going to we're going to talk about something a little bit different because I saw Babylon rise today. We need to, we we're, we're going to talk about Ash Wednesday, Good Friday, Lent, Ishtar and Ishtar eggs and I ain't scared of y'all. I ain't scared of y'all. Those of you that that don't want to watch me, you own your phone, but I'm but I'm gonna tell you the truth. Easter is only mentioned one time in all scripture. There was a pagan festival in the book of Acts. It's, it's not the same as, as the resurrection. No, no, no. But we'll talk about it. It's time for the truth to be made known. I love you. God loves you. And he wants you to know truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Not set you free. It doesn't say set. It shall make you free. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you just now, just now. He will save you. He will save you just now. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him just now. Only trust Him, only trust Him, just now. It's not His will that any man perish, but that all should come to repentance. God loves you, I do too.